Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of... Why are you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can-can and a can-can, a can-can, a can-can, and a wheel. Now we're off to... Everybody, and thank you for coming back to the channel. Yes, you're at Del Chanel's Forest World, where she has to co host the family, the YouTube family, coming back me up, especially in those comment sections. Trust planning issues season 14 episode 12 now can i'm tired of your ass i ain't gonna lie i ain't gonna lie i'm tired of your ass crying and taking all that on your shoulders that you were responsible for that play going under no baby you wasn't you wasn't the one or the one you could blame for that show or your play going under just to see it come into fruition was good enough for me. It should have been good enough for you as well. But I know we be running around there trying to get that money, that money, that money, that money out of paper. Okay. But you had nothing to do with the show going under and Broadway having out to shut down again. Think about the other producers out there. So I was glad Carl, uh, Todd uh, calmed your nerves and told you you know if you have this other opportunity like you're saying to get into another production uh i think it's the, called the piano lesson or something to that degree but yeah just go on and throw your hat in there and see what you can do with it and you know it's not you it's just nature you know it's just how the way how the way of the world is uh, running right now can't do nothing with this old going around here people don't want to wear their mask they don't want to safe distance they don't want to do none of that shit they want shit how it was before and that's why we got all this issue going on and people being unemployed because they work for uh businesses that really cater to serving you know um the community or you know individuals like restaurants uh <clears throat> what do you call it the movie theaters or even Broadway, you know, people want to go out and they want to have fun and they want to relax and not be caught up in, am I going to get sick from this event? Am I going to be taking something home to my family that's going to, you know, make us get sick? So, dry your weeping eyes, honey, and stop crying all the time. I can't stand you when you do that. Because you, you act like it was your fault. Now, I don't know about that mother's love now with it. That mother's love looked like it was coming at your doorstep because you were financing everything. But I know you were financing some of this stuff with uh, the colored man and all that. But hell, it got off the ground. People enjoyed it. Gave you great reviews. Gonna pass up that. We don't want to talk about that no more, Candy. Don't be crying about that shit because that's something you can't handle. That's something you... It, it was unforeseen, okay? It was out there, but we didn't know it was going to be detrimental to people's pay, okay? So you had nothing to do with that. It was just bad timing. So stop all your crying. Now, let's get to the meat and potatoes, honey. Let's get into the meat and potatoes. Now, for everybody that was trying to dog me out, talking about Todd got this, Todd got that, Todd got his own little thing. Well, guess what? <sighs> it did not reflect that on today's episode or yesterday's episode of the Real Housewives of Atlanta because the producers was being shady. They threw the whole tree at Todd and Todd was just, you know, he had to just stay under there. <laughs> Because when they got to talking about estate trust and planning and all that good things, they had candy assets and they had tar assets. Now, candy had everything under the sun uh, worth of excess to leave to her family members. Okay, once she exited out this plane of existence, they had tar side. I don't think they could say what tar had that condo. And I'm like, is that condo paid for tar? Is that condo paid for? But that was the only thing. You see what I'm saying? You see what it says tar? New Jersey condo. 
See what the other assets are? Can it on everything. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, guys, for the ones who were coming at me saying, oh, Tar got this, he got that. You, uh, hey, they showed it on the on the show what he got to his name. And then he went up there and said he was going to get at the Caleb. <laughs> I'm like, can I want that tore up piece of shit? Todd, you ain't even renovated it. You ain't did nothing. It looks like a disaster area like a bomb went off in there no you're gonna need a lot of more money to fix that little thing uh up and then them spiral staircases <laughs> ain't nobody got time to be walking around and going around in a circle to get up stairs no that shit needs to be towed down and put some stairs up there but that doesn't look like something Kayla would live in. You just need to sell this shit and give the proceeds to Kayla. If that's where you wanted to go. Because Candace said she wasn't with that shit. She ain't trying to do nothing with that shit. And she don't want nobody to have that shit but you. Okay? An unfinished condo. So, Kayla didn't want this shit. He, she looked at Todd like he was crazy. Like, I'm going to get my own. You taught me a valuable lesson. I'm pretty sure her mama said the same thing. You know, get out there and try to make it do what it do. But we got you if you fall flat on your face. We got you, okay? But we want you to experience what it means to be working on a job and you holding down the responsibility for food, shelter, and clothing for yourself. So you know when you out there working, hustling for that money, it don't come easy and you won't be making too many bad mistakes or choices because you know it's going to be on you. And your assets are either going to grow or they're going to deplete themselves in your account. Which way you want to go with it. That's Like I said, I, I feel for um, um, Todd on this. He was kind of right. You know, uh, Riley is kind of, uh, not in a bad way, but she's being taken care of. So she don't know a lot about too much of anything. You know, like fending for yourself. Because right now, what she's in... Her mood, her train of thought is making sure she stay on point with her grades. She got to be with her friends. She got to relax and, 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 you know, release when she gets too tensed up, I guess, about life itself or whatever. But, honey, no, Riley is not ready for the world. Like, say, if Candy was taken out, Mama Joyce was taken out, and she didn't know where to come and go. She has book smarts, but it don't seem like Riley have common sense smarts. Because when they tried to take her up there to uh, view her um, apartment they had got for her, she was like, do I have to tip uh, the concierge when he comes to do something in my apartment? Or, you know, <laughs> Riley don't have a clue. But the door of opportunity is going to knock on her door and... Either she's going to sink or swim, and that's going to be the basis of it. But like I said, Candy got Riley. But if you were to say, uh, since uh, she really never had to work for anything or have the option of, you know, getting this instead of that. You know, she didn't really have to make no choices because Candy had, you know, invested her money well. And I think Candy was trying to overspend because there was lack of a father figure. And um, Candy's uh, boyfriend at the time, uh, even though he was married and she still knew that, she ended up having a baby by him instead of taking the precautions and uh, having birth control. But, you know, hey, I don't know what he was telling her. And the wife don't even know what he was telling Candy. So it could have been, he was like, well, I'm going to leave her. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And none of it came to fruition. But a baby came out of it. So I think Candy was wearing the hats of both a father figure as well as a mother figure. And, you know, too many black women do that all the day, all the time, every day, all day. I'm one of them. You know, we kind of tend to overspend on that particular child because they did not have both parents in the household. And we could see how that was hurting our child or children when the father's not present. Or you can take it when the mother's not present. You know what I'm saying? So I can see the reason why Candy does what she does. And like I said, she make her own money. She make her own rules. She can do whatever she want to do, pretty much. But we need to uh, be able to let Riley kind of fend for herself on certain things. Like you get her a budget of, what, $500 a month or $500 every two weeks or something like that. And let her budget on her 
you know, expenses that she called expenses like, you know, eating out, getting her hair done, um, buying shit. I don't know what Riley would be doing up in New York and what she would be buying her and comings and goings. But, you know, if Candace taking care of her school, she's taking care of her apartment. There's really nothing left for her to whine about or want from her mom other than, you know, paying for her school and make sure she got some clothes on her back and make sure she got food in her tummy. But, you know, she already got the um, apartment set up and she might even give her money for Uber if she didn't take her car that Candy had bought for her prior to her uh, leaving home. Or maybe she has the car. Who, who knows? You know, it probably don't look like she cared to drive either. <laughs> she like, let me just get in this taxi or this Uber and let, me, let them take me where I want to go go if i want to come home i'll have my mom send me a ticket i fly home to, you know riley's gonna be known and she's gonna have a, a grasp on how the affluent live how the wealthy people live because she's never had to you know make a choice of getting this versus that she's always had so that's something kayla never really had and kayla had to boss up and say you know i'm getting this i want it for myself i don't want nobody said they gave it to me and you know she's doing all the right things to become self-sufficient and i'm sure todd taught her as well as her biological mom taught her you know you ain't gonna have everybody helping you all the time or you can't depend on everybody stepping in when you think they should step in because you don't drop the ball somewhere meaning overspending overindulging and not paying what you needed to pay that was being sufficient for you or for your livelihood so i can see both cases and stuff of that scenario but i cannot see uh candy dying and not putting these shit in place okay because todd ain't gonna act right his biological daughter, no, he ain't going to act right. Can in her heart, her heart's her good and her good, no. And Riley ain't here for the shits. <laughs> she said, no, I need y'all to settle this before y'all, uh, before my mama leave this world. I, I need to know I can get me some money because Todd is talking about, he trying to put them on a five-year plan. <laughs> like, you get, okay, you get uh 50000 or ten thousand this six months, and then the last six months I give it thirty thousand. And Ross, I ain't with that shit, cause hey, I might want to bust straight out coming out of college, you know, and wanting uh, y'all to invest in me, and it might take a hundred grand. And you know, you try to say I can only have uh, five or ten thousand, you know, a month. Hell, I, 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 I no, you don't understand my plight. <laughs> <laughs> and then a cat was looking like, I don't think you're going to treat my baby right. <laughs> that was funny as hell. Then she went and said, oh, Kayla, uh-uh, Kayla need, no, nah, Todd, you're not going to act right with these kids. And I know how you are. And Todd would get mad as hell. <laughs> He's like, these damn privileged kids. <laughs> I like poor Todd, poor Todd, poor Todd. You didn't have or you weren't blessed to have a silver spoon in your mouth when you came out your mother's womb baby she taught you right she taught you well but riley got a silver spoon and she ain't trying to make you turn that into no uh brass okay so she's pleading with her mother on and off tv straighten us out mama you see what kind of assets he got he just got that condo and he already told you in front of everyone that was sitting in the vicinity of where he was. That he giving that to Caleb. Now what do I have? <laughs> I said Lord have mercy. Candy you need to just go on. Right Riley. Caleb. Ace. Blaze. Mama Joyce. Any other other aunts. Melvin. What a name? Patrick. Oh, and then, okay, Todd, too. You need to go on and, and let, do a video, baby. Don't don't have them just written down. Do a video and have it written down of what all you finna leave for these folks. Because they gonna cut up, girl. Todd gonna have their behinds up in court. So, to alleviate all of that, go on and do the thing right now. Stop dragging your heels. Stop listening to him. Because you gonna do what you wanna do with your baby girl, Riley. That's already a known thing. And if you don't think you're going to be doing it, Mama Joyce got you. She'll be coming behind you, behind telling you, uh, your baby was here before that man you married. <laughs> 
Woo! Child, that was funny as hell. That's probably the best part. I liked it. On that show uh, that aired last night, beside the point, Sheree fucking up again. She going around here looking at patterns and, and material. We don't went down that road before, Sheree. We don't went down that road before. You should know what kind of patterns, what kind of cloths you want. She up there going to a doggone, um, um, what do you call it? Fabric shorts, a fabric shop, and trying to, you know, make like she just started this transition or trying to bring out a business. That's a law of him, mercy. Let me get on her ass. But anyway, that's all I got for uh, Miss Candy, <laughs> Mr. Todd Tucker, and the babies, honey. Candy, get that shit in writing ASAP. ASAP. If it's not done by the time reunion comes, you ought to be whipped up the crack of your ass because. You know, you don't know when you're going to leave this world. Don't nobody know when they're going to leave this world. And the one thing you don't want to leave this world is unfinished business. Because Todd, he going to like, well, I was the husband. And she didn't mention that to me. Or she had said she wasn't going to do that. No, don't leave nothing for Todd to try to in, uh, interpret when you have demise. When you have left this plane of existence. Leave step-by-step -step orders. Have one big family meeting. And tell them what you had. Come give them paperwork too if they need it. Uh, give them copies of everything. But at least you know your headspace will be clean. You have left your loved ones. Each and every one of them you choose to. What you felt they deserve. Because all of it was coming from you. It was all a blessing. They didn't help you get any of their wealth. Okay. So get down in them comments. Not them comments. <laughs> Get down on them papers. See your lawyers. You can have Todd present. Because I'm pretty sure he's going to be looking like, why she giving her this and she only giving me this much. I'm like, Todd, build up your own assets. So I kept telling people, you ain't got nothing. You ain't got a pot to piss in and a wing of the sling. And I know I'm honey. But that's all I got for this video, guys. Y'all get down in the comments and tell me what y'all thought about last night episode. And Miss Riley and Miss Kayla <laughs> looking at Todd. Like they can just throw his ass out the window like, uh-uh, <laughs> you don't understand my plight. Riley was like, you don't understand my plight, sir. <laughs> you, you're not my dad, okay? And I'm not going to listen to you. And I am privileged and I'm going to get what I can from my mama. Because she know I would take care of her. <laughs> and you damn sure don't want Mama Joyce to come up there. Uh, saying her two cents and a quarter. <laughs> but that's all I got, y'all. I'll see y'all next video. Bye-bye.